Why is it so easy to see how others are doing themselves harm, but so hard to see how I harm myself? Well, there are a number of answers to this, obviously, because we can approach every question from a number of different points of view, a number of different perspectives. Because life is a matter of levels of being, a matter of consciousness, there's an answer for each level of being. The answer for man number one may not be the answer for man number two, but it may be similar. And the answer for man number three may not be the answer for man number one or two, but that answer may be similar to one and two. When you get to the answer for man number seven, six, five, four, the answer is so dissimilar to number one, two, or three that there's almost no comprehension of, well, how could that be? That's That can't be. That's not right. We'll look at it from, it's so easy to see how others are doing themselves harm. There's two ways to look at this. One way is, what does it mean others are doing themselves harm? Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that other people are doing it wrong? They're not doing what I would do? Yeah, it means that. It means other people are doing it wrong. Well, because harm is a matter of, let, let's, let's face it, harm is a matter of um, interpretation. When a parent looks at his kid, he says, well, I don't want you to do that. You'll hurt yourself. And the kid looks at the parent and says, well, you're crazy. I'm not going to hurt myself doing this. People who smoke, they don't think they're hurting themselves. Or maybe they do, but it's not a reality. They haven't really got the picture. This is killing me. This is contributing to all kinds of things that will not only reduce the amount of years I have to live in this body, it will also re seriously reduce the quality of those years through heart disease, and complications that occur due to the, the, the harmful side effects of smoking. But people can't see that. Well, why can't they see that? Well, there are a number of reasons. One is they don't want to. The reason most of us can't see how, why we're harming our, ourselves, we can see that others are harming themselves, but we can't see why we're harming ourselves, is because we don't want to. We have absolutely no desire to change. None. The only reason we want to change is because we're not getting what we want. This is the big motivator for people to change. I'm not getting what I want. Therefore, I want other people to change. Well, that's not going to get you what you want. <laughs> well, but we'll spend most of our lives doing that way first. And then when we finally come up against the wall that will not move any longer, you can't Make other people change so that you'll be happy because no matter how much they change, you're still not going to be happy because you're still going to be the same because you're still going to be taking impressions in the same way. They're going to be falling on the same place and you're going to be having the same reactions. So no matter, no matter how, how much the quality of other people's lives changes, that's not going to change the quality of your life. So when we realize that painful fact, then we come to grips with, okay, I've got to change me. But we don't think there's anything about us that needs to change. We are really convinced that we're fine the way we are. There may be a couple of little things, but mostly they're just minor things. That doesn't matter. When I get a haircut, that'll change that. You know, when I get a new suit of clothes, that'll change that. When I get a better place to live, that'll change that. Well, if I'm driving a better car, that'll change that. Well, if I had a better wife or a better husband, that'd change that. And then I'd be fine. Everybody would think so. I certainly know it would be. I know it would be true. That's our idea of self-change. But what the work says is self-change is this radical change where you are no longer the person you know yourself to be. In fact, the person you now know yourself to be is actually the enemy. False personality is actually the enemy. It's what's keeping you in this place that isn't really very good because we, we can't do anything. We're not really happy. Not really. We've always got a list of things that need to change in order for us to be happy. We can't, for some reason, we can't come to grips with being process oriented about anything. Just enjoying the process. We've got to, we've got to do everything like, well, when I get this done, then I'll be happy. Right. So we're committed to the idea that this isn't it. It's got to be some other way for me to be happy. This can't be it. This can't be it. This cannot be how life is. If this is how life is, it's not worth living. Then we get suicidal. 
or depressed or whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. It's the same thing. The idea that life isn't giving me what I want and there's no way out, so I'll die. <laughs> if I can't have it the way I want to have it, then I don't want to have it at all. Okay. So it's so easy to see how others are doing themselves harm because we can be somewhat objective about other people. I say somewhat. We can't be objective because we don't know what objective is. Because objective is not a characteristic of this state of consciousness that we're in. See, this state of consciousness that we're in, there are characteristics of it. You know, just like there are characteristics to the being of a dog. There are characteristics to the being of a cat. You don't look at just the body and know the difference. If you saw a dog acting like a cat, you would know there was something different about that dog. If you saw a cat acting like a dog, you would know there was something different about that cat. You would scratch your head and say, whoa, what's going on with this? You know, you saw a dog sitting there licking his paw and then licking and preening himself and, you know, and a dog walking around going meow and rubbing up against people and doing cat things. It'd freak you out. You know, because the, the being, the level of being wouldn't go with the physical body. Well, see, for us, we're so attached to the physical body, to other people's physical bodies, to our own physical bodies, that we cannot see levels of being. We're just blind to them. We don't see them. And because our level of being is such that we've got these blinders on, we can't see because we're so glued to the senses, we can't see a real level of being, we can't see what's really there. We don't see people acting. You know, they have to really be acting. Somebody has to climb up into a clock tower and start shooting people. We go, oh, that level of being is not good. We better put an end to that. And then we go and clap the body in handcuffs and take the body away. We never do anything with the level of being. We never approach that at all because we don't know how. We don't even know what a level of being is. But a level of being has characteristics, just like a dog has characteristics, just like a cat has characteristics, just like a bird has characteristics. If you saw a dog or a cat flying, you would say that rotten kid next door has got the catapult, catapult built. You know, <laughs> But you wouldn't think, you, you, it's because your mind won't wrap around that. So it's easy. It's easier to see what others are doing when others are doing themselves harm than it is to see when we're doing ourselves harm because we have absolutely no objectivity when it comes to ourselves because we don't observe ourselves. We're, we're too busy observing other people. And that's all we can observe when we're glued to the five senses and we're always looking out. We're never looking in. We've never, did, we've never really... See, there is an organ of sight. We call that the eyes. There's an organ of hearing. We call that the ears. There's an organ of uh, the olfactory organ, the nose. There's an organ for taste. That's the tongue and the mouth. So we have organ, an organ for sensations. That's the body. We can sense things with our body. We can tell when it's cold or when it's hot, when it's prickly, when it's, when it's soft, when it's smooth. We can tell cashmere from, from a cactus. Um, usually, usually. Now, some people can't. You know, Some people are so dense, so thick, so coarse in their level of being that it's very difficult for them to tell the difference in things. Their, their, their level of being needs to be educated so they can tell the difference between wool and cashmere. So they can tell the difference between uh, this kind of wine or that kind of wine. You understand what I'm saying? So they can determine finer differences between things. And that's what level of being is. So level of being determines what we see in others, and level of being determines what we're able to see in ourselves. So the answer is so broad that there's no real way to answer this. This is the way it is. Because there is no, this is the way it is. It's this way, and it's this way, and it's this way, and it's this way, and it's this way. So it's all these ways.